This is NR2003 Predicts. Using constantly updating ratings, we determine where Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series drivers will place at any given track any given week. Standard disclaimer, this video is for entertainment purposes only using the process of artificial intelligence and should not be used in the process of gambling. So here's how it works. We update drivers' ratings week by week as we go throughout the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series schedule. We run a 100% simulation with normal tire wear and fuel consumption. Qualifying results match what the drivers actually ran in real life. Because qualifying data can't be arranged at the same time as forcing cautions, stages will not be enforced throughout these races. And weather used reflects the real-time data based on the actual start time of the race. Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson making up the front row. It's Bristol, baby! Green flag here at the short half mile. Hamlin gets off to a nice jump while Kyle Larson struggling on the outside line. We saw the inside line working very well in qualifying. However, the outside line seems like it was working in the Xfinity race. Hamlin will lead lap number one. And we're going to have an incident as well. Looks like Kyle Busch not happy about starting all the way back in 31st. He's going to end up dumping Chris Buescher into the inside wall. Caution flag comes out. Of just lap number two. We'll get back to racing. Looks like Ty Dillon went a lap down. Everyone looked like they came down for a pit stop. And that might be why he spent so long there and ended up a lap down. Oh, the Benedetto. He was restarting second place. Looks like he might have gotten to the outside wall. Looking at Denny Hamlin, he is a former winner at this racetrack. Won the 2012 August race, but in the 13 races following that, he's only finished in the top five four times. Here comes Kevin Harvick. He is another one of those drivers that have won here before. He's done it twice. Most recently, he did it in 2016 in the August race, but then you have to go all the way back to spring of 2005 for his first win here. Meanwhile, Kyle Busch, who got into that scuffle with Chris Buescher earlier, he is the king of this racetrack. Obviously, qualifying didn't work out well as he started from near the back of the field. But he was the April winner here the past two seasons, as well as the August winner a couple years ago. Matt Tiff came off pit road and blended right up in front of Landon Castle and put himself in the wall, as well as the double zero. That is going to bring out yet another caution. So we go back to green flag. Denny Hamlin still out in front. This time it's Eric Jones that's going to start up right behind him. Here comes Kurt Busch. If Kyle's the king of this racetrack, well... Kurt might be second in line, as he is also pretty well off here. He's a six-time winner, the most recently coming in this race one year ago. At one point, he had won three in a row, spanning between 2003 and 2004. Going to have more problems. Ryan Newman and Daniel Suarez, two cars that are on the cut line. J.J. Ailey going to run into them, but that is big for playoff implications. Those two right near that borderline. Daniel Suarez already on the outside. Ryan Newman just inside. So we'll go back to green flag racing, and now it's Den uh, Brad Keselowski who will line up just behind Denny Hamlin. Keselowski, a two-time winner as well, went back-to-back -back in 2011 and 2012. Now trying to chase down Hamlin for his third victory at the racetrack. Meanwhile, further back in the field, going to be an incident here. Ross Chastain, Matt DiBenedetto, I believe that was Clint Boyer, and Bubba Wallace all going to get involved in a scuffle going into turn number three. Heavy damage to the 15 car. Now we're seeing a little bit more pit strategy as Denny Hamlin going to line up behind a few cars going to the restart. However, the 11 car is still out front and Keselowski just behind him. Going to be another spin. Kyle Weatherman filling in for the suspended Bailey Curry. Going to go off the front of Kyle Larson and into the inside wall on the back stretch. An experienced driver trying to get a little bit more starts and he is going to see the wall. Denny Hamlin experiencing mechanical issues. He is going to drop out of the race, and Kyle Busch, his teammate, also experiencing problems. He will stay in the race, though. Meanwhile, Alex Bowman going to inherit the lead with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. just behind him. And yet another spin involving the 52, this time in front of traffic, going to collect a lot of cars. That's Harvick, Logano, Blaney, Martin Trex Jr., several big-time names involved in this one in an accident in turns one and two taking out a few more cars. We're going to have no one left running at the end of this race if it continues like this. Alex Bowman continues to run. So does Joey Logano and Jimmy Johnson, both of whom have won two races here. Logano's came in the August races in 2014 and 2015. 
and for Johnson, those came in the spring races in 2017 and 2010. Another issue here, Ross Chastain not letting up on Bubba Wallace right in the front of Ty Dillon and Quinn Half, and Paul Menard also going to end up going around. So many incidents taking place, and we haven't even passed lap 100. Now it's going to be Eric Jones that's out in front, Chase Elliott just behind him. Here's another incident taking place on the front stretch. Landon Cr Castle crowds up Jimmy Johnson, but doesn't spin around, so no caution. However, just behind this, Kevin Harvick might have ran over something because he goes straight into the wall and turns one and two, and that is going to allow a bunch of cars to go underneath. Look at all those spots he's losing, even though some of those cars might not be on the same lap as him. Definitely a lot of traffic going underneath them, and Jimmy Johnson coming to pit lane. It looks like that might have caused some problems for him. So in the middle of a green flag run, he has to come down. Meanwhile, look at this tight battle off of the pit lane. Josh Balicki and Matt Benedetto not happy with each other. Clint Boyer on the outside has nowhere to go. Boyer just needs a solid run. Seven top fives in 27 starts at this track. And right on the playoff cut line, he is, though, in the top 10. Meanwhile, Daniel Suarez is not. He's kind of in the middle of nowhere, which, frankly, given the amount of accidents happening, it's probably good that he's around nobody. But he is on the outside of the cut line at the moment by about six points over behind Boyer, so that's a big problem for him. Eric Jones is trying to catch up to Chase Elliott. Jones, at this point, seems like he's pretty well off, and it looks like he's also going to be staying with Joe Gibbs Racing for next season. And while we haven't mentioned Chase Elliott's name too much this race, he's a two-time winner this year at Talladega and at Watkins Glen, going for win number three as his teammate kind of crowds him up the hill, and Eric Jones going to take a look to the inside. Side by side, going off at turn number four, and it looks like Jones is going to have this one, especially as Elliott's trapped behind the 51 of B.J. McLeod. And yes, Eric Jones is going to take the lead as the leaders go into lap traffic. Oh, there might have been a little contact there between Stenhouse Jr. and Kurt Busch. Let's remember, those two have a little bit of a history based on the race at Pocono. And of course, they'll be right next to each other. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has dropped out of the top 20 in points. So at this point, he needs to win, and he does pretty well at this racetrack. Chase Elliott and Ricky Stenhouse Jr., the top two in average finish. Meanwhile, how is Ross Chastain up here in second place? He has a killed race car in the back, but yet he is still up here competing in this, in this one. He is really grinding it out. Meanwhile, we got Daniel Hemrick up here trying to compete inside the top ten. It's been a bit of a rough rookie season, but rookies tend to not make the playoffs. He's just trying to fight his way into a good finish today. William Byron has now slotted into the second position, now tracking down his teammate just behind him. Elliott already a two-time winner, as you mentioned. William Byron has no wins on the season, even though he's pretty comfortably inside the playoff pitcher. He is still trying to go for that first win, and it looks like to the inside of Chase Elliott, he is going to take the lead right here as Jimmy Johnson also following. However, he is not on the lead lap. Contact with the outside wall for Ryan Priest is going to send him into Kevin Harvick. It's going to send those two for a spin on the front stretch. Caution flag back out after we, we were on what I think is our longest green flag run of the race. The field will bunch up once again, and Chase Elliott going to lead the field. Eric Jones now in between the two Hendrick cars. Ricky Semlas Jr. just behind all of them. Let's go to a little bit of a bad stat. Michael McDowell is not a fan of this racetrack. 18 starts here, and he has an average finish of 31.5. Just three top 20s among those 18 starts, no top 10s. Here we see William Byron trying to battle the traffic. There is a lot between him and the nine car. As you can see, Chase Elliott has extended a huge gap over the rest of the field, and Kurt Busch looks like he's going to take advantage and go in second place, but still, they are struggling. Jimmy Johnson, another one of those cars that is struggling. He's outside the top 10. He needs to get himself into the playoffs. At the moment, Ryan Newman having a bad day. That's going to help Johnson try to get his way into the top 16. Kurt Busch is trying to work his way up toward Chase Elliott. He's been able to scrub off a second and looks like he's still gaining. Going for another victory this season. How about the 77 car? This week it's driven by Reed Sorensen. You don't talk about the 77 too much besides that Daytona victory. But right now, it's inside the top 20, and given how this race is gone, it's not too much of a surprise. Everything seems to be a surprise in this race to the point where it's not being a surprise. Like Ross Chastain 
still in the top 10. Look at the back end of that race car after it got shoved into the outside wall. Now we got Chase Elliott coming down for a pit stop. This is green flag stop, and it looks like it's scheduled. He might have played some pit strategy before, so I don't believe we'll see too many guys coming down right now as Kirk Busch assumes the lead. Chase Elliott will come down, uh, come out two laps down. As he runs just behind Clint Boyer, who is still out on the racetrack running second and trying to close the gap between him and Bush. Contact right here. Oh, boy. Ryan Blaney had a very scary moment right there as he watched the 47 hit the outside wall. Blaney currently running ninth, but he is a lap down. There's a very small amount of cars still on the lead lap. Blaney just trying to keep it within the top 10. Now we see Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He's worked himself into the sixth position, but he is in a little bit of traffic behind the 21 and one of those Rick Ware cars, I believe the 53. Looking for a good day today, even though he's gonna have to win to get in. Corey LaJoy having a little bit of a moment up into Ryan Blaney, but no caution, they, they keep it straight. Meanwhile, there's a big gaggle right here. William Byron behind the traffic, trying to catch up to the two car who's just nearly at the front of this pack. But the 24 is not comfortable where he is right now. Here comes the two car down the pit lane. It looks like some more scheduled stops. This one might be a bit of a bigger group. As we see there goes the 20 car as well. And here comes the one from the lead. However, this might be a little premature. Happening on the front stretch just as the one car is going down. Ty Dillon gets into Ryan Priest and sends him for a spin. Back up the racetrack into Kevin Harvick. That is going to bring out another caution. Somehow, Kurt Busch still retains the lead. So it looks like they actually played it out in his favor. As everyone else still had to come down for a pit stop that hadn't come down already. More contact. More problems. Matt Tipton, the outside wall, gets spun around by William Byron. Still on the lead lap. Now we'll bunch the field up once again, even though they haven't gotten very far. However, it was further problems for Byron as they kept going. So, 24 comes back up. Slides up the hill. Big hit. That is Michael McDowell, who's going to have some heavy front-end damage. So they'll go back to green. Looks like Kurt Busch came down pit lane. Doesn't look like anyone else did. Clint Boyer is going to be out in front now. But we're going to have yet another problem. Alex Bowman in the turn one. It looked like he was coming down the pit lane, but he did it from the outside line right in front of Daniel Suarez, and it's going to collect Byron and Kurt Busch, who had just come down for that pit stop. I have no idea why Bowman was coming down to pit lane, but he'll do it now and have that damage repaired, but he is off the lead lap now. Boyer still leading the way. More contact. Kyle Weatherman around again, this time off the front of David Reagan. 52 driver is having a bad day. He only has one start this season prior to this one. Kurt Busch now out in front. It looks like the rest of the field did come down for a pit stop. And some more problems. This time, BJ McLeod into the outside wall. Look at this big hit. Ryan Blaney into the side door of Kevin Harvick. Going to send him for a flip. Heavy contact, and I'm surprised the four car is still at least crawling. You would think that car would come to a stop. Here's from Blaney's angle. As he just didn't know where they were going to go. Thought it was going to run down the racetrack. And it did not. Back to green. Chase Elliott trailing Kurt Busch. As we're slowly getting through this one, but we are getting closer to 500 laps. Here comes the 88 car. He's going to go to the inside of the one, trying to get his lap back. Even though he has a very damaged race car, you can see the back end and both the sides are caved in. But being on that inside line is going to help out Chase Elliott, his teammate, head toward the lead. One car sliding back as now the 14 also looking to the inside. And now yeah, the one car all the way back to fourth place. And going to have even more trouble as I think Daniel Hemrick's starting to come as well behind his teammate Austin Dillon. So Kurt Busch, who was out in the front for a little bit, is going to have some problems. Meanwhile, William Byron falling away from the lead group as he is all the way back in sixth place. A few seconds behind. 24 card just trying to bring it home. At least with a good finish to make sure that he gets into the playoffs even if he doesn't get the victory. Here's Alex Bowman still battling. He was in front of the leaders. Now he is not. He's still back a lap down as he's got Clint Boyer right in front of him. Eric Jones has kind of gotten out of the conversation as well. He's still in the top 10, but he is a lap down. 
as Jimmy Johnson going to his inside. Jones trying to track down Keselowski just in front of him for a position. Going to be a little problem here for Chase Elliott, the leader. He's trying to get around the lapped car, and he's going to hit the outside wall doing it. So he doesn't lose the lead, but he's going to lose some time. Clint Boyer going to get a little bit closer. There is Daniel Hemrick currently within the top five. Great run for the eight team. Exactly what they needed to get some confidence going in that group. Meanwhile, here comes Kurt Busch. He is tracking down the nine car slowly. It just depends on where the lap traffic is and if they can continue to get around them. But the one car within two and a half seconds back. Problem here is BJ McLeod goes hard into the wall and Quinn Houff got to pile into him. Alex Bowman lucky to get around that one. There goes the one car of Kurt Busch. I believe that actually the nine was just the inside of Book McLeod when that happened. So that's a bit of a scary incident for the leader who is going to stay out in front as he goes to the green flag. However, he's going to make a little bit of a mistake into the outside wall. Three cars going to his inside. Kurt Busch, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., and it was going to be the 14 of Clint Boyer. However, he slid up a little bit, but still going to be able to complete the pass. Now Stenhouse Jr. out in front. We mentioned he is in the top two among average finishers here. Four top fives and 13 starts. Average finish of 13. That is just 0.6 spots shy of Chase Elliott, who just lost the lead. So now Stenhouse Jr. out in front, looking for his first victory, not on a super speedway. Meanwhile, here is Daniel Hemmick trying to track down William Byron. Both of these cars are heavily damaged. But they're still fighting for position. They're still grinding it out. Aerodynamics hardly matter here. Here comes Clint Boyer to the inside of Stenhouse Jr. And Kurt Busch looking to follow along with the two cars behind and both of the Hendrick cars. Then, here, oh, there's a little gaggle here. Look at the contact. Michael McDowell getting in the way of Kurt Busch and Boyer. Chase Elliott just trying to get through it all. They are really rubbing. It looks like McDowell's going to get dumped. Oh, that is going into turn one, actually. By Jimmy Johnson, contact mate, and heavy damage to Daniel Hemrick. Running in the top 10, and he is going to have to limp it around and come down the pit lane. And his day might be done. It looks like he's still on the racetrack, but he is possibly trying to get that thing repaired constantly now. We're going to have some more trouble. Josh Balicki and Landon Castle make contact going into turn one. That is also going to collect Reed Sorensen. So a few back markers that are, uh, uh, I think Castle is actually running in the top 20, maybe the top 15 at this point. This race is completely backwards as we go back to green and back to yellow. McLeod spun and into Jimmy Johnson and Alex Bowman collected one of the cars that was now on the lead lap. He got his lap back eventually. That was not what he needed though. He will stay on the racetrack though. And now we're looking to see can we get to the end with a green flag run? Looks like Chase Elliott's been able to get out in front of Kirk Busch pretty well. One car is unable to really get a sight on him. Meanwhile, Ross Chastain is still up here in the top 10. He was 11th until Hemrick had his problem. Now he's been able to luck his way into a top 10 run. Remember, he got a top 10 at Daytona in the February race. <laughs> you never expected that he would get another top 10 without going to a super speedway. But it looks like a short track is going to work out for him. Meanwhile, Alex Bowman still up to speed. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr. barely getting touched right there. Reed Sorensen and Landon Castle making contact. Almost took out the 17. Brad Keselowski is still in this race. And in case you haven't noticed, haven't talked a bunch about him. But he is still in the top five. He is tracking down the 24 who we're, we're looking off the back of. Could be a top three day waiting for Keselowski. Matt Benedetto. His contract, his future is up in the air, and we know that he's leaving Levine Family Racing. But he's going to put together his fifth top ten of the season as it stands. All of them coming within the past nine races. Kurt Busch still looking to get up to Chase Elliott. But he's having a hard time with these lapped cars in between both of them. He's going to try his hardest, but it looks like it's going to come to a sudden end as on the backstretch... Austin Dillon gets into Ross Chastain, spins him around up into the outside wall, and that is going to bring out the caution and effectively end this race. Chase Elliott, the guy that's going to be out in front, 
He is going to see the checkered flag, and he's going to claim victory number three of the season. Four wins in total for Hendrick Motorsports. Here's the final finishing results. Elliot, Kurt Busch, Brad Keselowski, Boyer, and Byron make up the top five. Alex Bowman just outside of it. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., the last car on the lead lap. Eric Jones, Matt Benedetto, and Ross Chastain make up the top ten. Those last two very good runs by them, especially for Chastain in a premium motorsports car. Here's the rest of the field, and you can see, look at how many laps all these guys are down. That is how many problems we've had today. Landon Castle all the way up in 12th. Josh Bullicky 18th. Reed Sorensen 20th. Ridiculously good finishes, but then you see, going back a page, you can see the guys that are out of the race. A lot of guys that have potential to go for victories. Johnson, Blaney, Harvick, they all crashed out in this one, which gave some of those back markers their big days. You can see here's the final nine positions and terrible day for Toyota. Eric Jones and De Benedetto obviously came home with top tens, but those big three guys in that camp all crashed out. That is it for NR 2003 predicts. Hope you enjoy the race, and we will see you all next time.